Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this video on how to configure DNS service records for Cisco Jabber. Now in some of the previous videos I had watched we were not using DNS Reliance at all and so when we configured Cisco Jabber we were going to the advanced settings, selecting our IMN present server, uh, using the IP address in a manual fashion. Uh, with the service records what that's going to allow us to do is to put the username in in an email format so in this case for example YouTube D at freelab.local and click continue it will say finding services and once we log in as you can see here it automatically will then pull all the information and no manual configuration needed so that's what we're going to do here now obviously I've already done this and the reason is somewhere between the UCCX and working on the VCS Expressway in the back end I made a lot of these changes on Jabber and realized I didn't make a video on that so uh, this video I'm going to show you how to do that now when we did that when we entered the username at the Freelab local what that first was doing is going to check for this um, service domain here this underscore Cisco dash UDS dot underscore TCP dot and uh, freelab dot local in this example um, if that was not found uh, so for example if we're using a uh, version 8.6 or lower then it would then look for this cup login and if neither one of those resolve in that order then it will use the collab edge and that is for if you're going to use VCS Expressway with MRA which is one of the things I've been uh, working on uh, on the back end so <clears throat> what does this mean exactly well if we pull up our DNS server and in this case I'm using Windows Server 2012 you can see under the forward lookup zones under Freelab local we have our host names which are typical for what you use for everyday DNS so if you're using a web browser or whatever application um, the main objective for a forward lookup is to find the IP address associated with the name and for pointer records with reverse lookup zones for example that does the opposite that'll look for a name that's associated with the IP so with the service record what that's going to allow us to do is add some additional specifics so where does a particular service it, where is it located what port does it use what protocol does it use and you know what device is running that uh, profile or service so if we go over to TCP here you can see I have the two underscore Cisco dash UDS and underscore cup login now we'll never use this because we're on 11.5 but again if you're using 8.6 or lower that's where this one would come in uh, to play and let's just open one of these and we'll look at how it's <coughs> set up here we can see we have our domain name the service name and then the protocol if we want to set priority or wait for preference if we have multiple servers that this could point to the port number then the fully qualified domain name for the host of the host now if we were to pull up a command prompt and use NSLOOKUP for example this is a specific type of record by default if we were to say something like uh, go to NSLOOKUP and if we were just to put in cisco-uds dot uh, underscore tcp dot freelab dot local it's not gonna find anything uh, for that so what we in this case what you have to do is type in a set type equals SRV and then if you run that again now you can see we get a response that has the priority weight port and the server host name with the fully qualified domain and under that the fully qualified domain then does a standard DNS lookup to give you the IP address of that device so if we we're gonna configure these from scratch for example you could go in here and th this is the Windows version if you're using bind or something else uh, you would 
use the respective format for whatever application you're running DNS on. But in this case, we're going to go to other new records. And if we scroll down, there's this service location, SRV. And we can say create record. And uh, here we can say UDS Cisco 2, for example. And the protocol was TCP. And make this whatever you want. And 8443. And then the host was um, CUCM pub one dot free lab dot local and hit OK. And then again, if we were to put that in our DNS, or not, I did it backwards, that's why. <laughs> so let's see underscore UDS Cisco 2 this isn't a real service that Jabber uses I was just since I already have it in there I just want to give you an example um, of building it from scratch so this is how when we hit the login how it actually went through and was able to find the services and this Cisco document kind of um, explains and gives some examples as well as I will put this in the description. All right, just save that into Notepad so that I won't forget. And I thought I'd just mention this too. Uh, there, and I'll put this in the description too. If anyone's using the remote uh, mobile and remote access for Jabber using the Expressway, in the Free Lab beta, which I'm I'm still. Uh, ironing out but just to show you um, I'm actually gonna have to disconnect from the VPN first to show you this alright so now that I'm disconnected from the VPN if I try to sign in now from the public and notice I was prompted and it says cannot communicate with the server that's one of the issues I'm working on right now once I have that fixed I'll be working on or I'll make the VCS Expressway video series but um, in the meantime if you hit control shift D you can see the diagnostics information so just wanted to point out here as you can see down here um, the DNS records it's going to collab-edge uh, t underscore TLS VoIPTech.info which points to VCSE VoIPTech.info so if you were to try this yourself uh, so we'll say back in our NS lookup set type equals SRV and collab edge dot underscore TLS dot info. then again you can see that similar to the internal except now this is how do I get to the expressway um, VCS expressway and at this point it would tunnel through and um, like I say I'll make another video series for this once it gets going but just wanted to give you an example of all three of the service records that you potentially will be using and I'm going to sign back into the VPN real quick. And now that we're on, as you can see, if I click sign in again, it should find that initial service record for the internal and log me back in, like so. And the other thing is on call manager itself. If we go to the enterprise parameters, So down here, in previous videos, you know, for the phone URLs, when we were not relying on DNS, this is where we removed uh, the host name and replaced it with IPs. But here, under cluster domain configuration, we've got our top level domain. We'll put in the freelab.local. So, if the, if it's any device is not specified. 
it just has the host name. It'll append that freelab.local for uh, fully qualified domain lookup. And then uh, this is saying that this will answer for anything in the voiptech.info or freelab.local. So if you have dual domains, so if you're using the internal and external with Expressway, for example, this is where you can put that in. And one last thing is in regard to getting the images on there, uh, if we go back to our dot diagnostic, control shift D, um, you can see the configurations of, these are the phone or the Jabber client specific configurations. And right here, you can see that there's this Jabber dash config XML file. And if we open that, right here, um, I added this dire XML of directory UDS and the uh, location under, this is just the publisher IP, but then this UDS photos with token is the web server where you want, uh, the, or where you have the PNG or JPEG, whatever format, PNG is recommended. And then the variable of the percent percent UUID percent percent dot PNG. So that way it will look for a file name with whoever's um, CUID. In this case, it was YouTube D. So if I go back to our server, and you can see under the main root, I have uh, photos with YouTube A, B, C, and D. So as those YouTube users, as their usernames, uh, if you click on it, it just has an image of them, and it's 128 by 128 pixels. And then Jabber will automatically resize them for like the login screens. Like for example, here if I sign out, sign out. Now you can see it's you know a bigger icon here. Um, it'll it'll make those different sizes automatically in your local cache. And then on all and all the remote desktop sessions, I do have a link So I'll just sign into one here um a little bigger here all right and up at the top I do have this jabber config generator and you can download this um, and host it on your own server too if you want But then as you can see here, you can just go through and fill out this information and it'll generate a config file, config file for you. And then once you do that, then just like any other file that you would manage through C CUCM, is you would go over to your OS administration then software TFTP management and then you would upload the Jabber config file to the root directory um, so, so then you just grab the file and upload it and that's what Jabber pulls down automatically and that's how um, when we when it you after we created the DNS entries and it pulled the information from that uh, generic config file uh, that I had uploaded to the call manager here then it then from the diagnostics page that's where this file here um, the jabber-config.xml was obtained so with that I hope this was informative for you and thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video